Aries, this is your week ahead astrology forecast by Astrology Motivation from Born Without Boundaries. In this video, every single week, we review the major planetary aspects and transits for the week and how they're going to impact your natal sun. We're going to start out really broad with the big stuff that sort of is going to impact everybody globally. And then we're going to focus down on Aries specific energies. And then we're going to get real specific and I'll be able to tell you how all of this energy and all these other planets are impacting your natal suns specifically without even knowing exactly where they're located. And the way I do it is I'll break the whole sign of Aries down into the three decans, which is groups of 10 degrees, um, which will give me an understanding of how your natal suns will be impacted based on where your natal sun is located. Now, in order to enjoy this video, you only need to know your birth date. That's all you need to know because I'll be able to estimate the correlating birth dates to the degrees. Those are just estimates though, so if you really want precision, uh, grab your natal chart. They're free and it's a great first step into a deeper understanding of astrology. Uh, you can get them online at many different websites. Do them. Just search free natal chart, free birth chart. You'll need your birth date, which you already have, your birth time and your birth location. Plug it in. It'll, a couple of seconds, it'll pop out all the information that you need. Um, but like I said, you can just come along with me right now because I'll be able to mention your birth dates and you'll be able to enjoy the information anyway. So I, what do I keep looking down on? This is what I keep looking down on. I take notes. I honestly can't get it in here unless I scribble here. That's just how my brain works. Um, so the big stuff, right? Let's start. This is just like the thumbnail and the uh, title said, from June 22nd to the 28th. That's the week span we're talking about here. So congratulations, it is now cancer season. Wish all your cancer friends the happy birthdays and the happy cancer season. They'll love that. Um, the sun entered cancer on the 21st, which would have been yesterday, if you're watching this when I first uploaded Aries. And the summer solstice was yesterday, which is basically a huge celebration time. It's sort of the brightest, sun shiniest, fullest brightest day of the year where we get the most sunlight wherever we are on the globe so this is a really happy sun shiny bright beautiful time where the day is longer than the night um steadily that will start to decrease over time but the sun has really warmed us up and we can radiate this sunshine and joy for the rest of the summer the summer solstice is the beginning of summer season and happy cancer season to everybody um so the sun is now in cancer it is also part of a grand water trine between the sun saturn which is in pisces at about seven degrees in retrograde and the south node and what this is all about is getting really comfortable and really in harmony with what we do and what we do well and figuring out how to use it practically and getting the validation and getting seen for it and getting recognized toward and having the confidence to be able to do it and yes 150 thousand percent that is a good thing it's nice kind of comfort and flow especially with what you do for a living those processes and those goals and aspirations um we have also another very helpful aspect here which is jupiter sextile saturn with a sextile it's a very it's a very complementary aspect so you get the best of both planets because they all have their good and bad sides, right? So this is Jupiter. Jupiter, the best of Jupiter is it's open-mindedness and it's opportunity and it's optimism and it's fortunate kind of energy as well as it's a uh, broad mindedness and it's openness to learn it loves Jupiter loves to learn about cultures and experiences by talking to people and introducing itself to new things it's just not afraid it wants to grow so we have that energy combined with the positive sides of Saturn and there are <laughs> don't let anybody tell you that there's not 
Saturn is grounded. It's, uh, it's honest and it's truth. It's sincere because it's practical and you can measure everything that it's up to. It's also mature, which means it controls itself and it knows how to dedicate itself and work and, 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 and commit itself and stick to its commitments, take its commitment seriously. So if you combine all that energy in a beautiful sextile, this is productivity, expansion, and career development, and personal development. I love this energy. We are maturing with and through open-mindedness. We also have another very helpful energy, um, which is Venus conjunct Mars. Now, I can't say helpful. That may be a little distracting. Venus conjunct Mars in Leo. Come on, man. That is power-packed with romance because... Leo actually is the sign of romance. Many think it is Libra. It is not. Leo is the sign of romance because it has everything to do with the heart and following your passions and having conviction and confidence and where your heart guides you and what your purpose on this earth is. And that's Leo, full and complete confidence and dedication to those ideals. So you have Venus and Mars conjuncting in Leo. Hot damn. This is major, major, major romantic energy as well as motivational energy and amping up that virility and getting our sex drive in which is very powerful energy to get things done and to motivate us not just just for our sexuality but in our life in general you know what i'm saying now with venus conjunct mars and this is something you really should listen to because mars is your ruling dignitary we're going to get into that and it impact everything that's happening to it impacts you so this is a wildly wonderful and very sexual time for you guys enjoy it there is a square to uranus and a trine to chiron it seems like it complicates things i actually think it makes things a thousand times better because uranus is the energy of revolution so this is a sexual revolution and then this trying to chiron that heals and harmonizes traumatic experiences in the past so this is major breakthroughs that we're about to have with the real deep wounds that we've had to suffer in the past by allowing ourselves or forcing ourselves to not accept the same old, same old, but insist on something different and something far more intriguing and interesting. There you go. We're going to leave it there. Now, toward the end of this week, um, on, the, on the 26th, Mercury will finally conjunct the sun. It's been catching up. But, uh, Mercury will conjunct the sun. It's still in Gemini at that point, but just at the end of Gemini, as it transits into Cancer, this is the second big transit we, we well, the major transit we have this week. Mercury will transit into Cancer by the 27th of June. So you have Mercury conjuncting the sun as it transits into Cancer. This gives us really intellectual brain power, brightness, seeing things clearly, having confidence what we say, being, being able to speak confidently. All of this is really, really wonderful energy because it's sort of like our thoughts being seen out loud or information coming out. And I really love that energy too. Now let's double down into Aries specific energy. So for Aries specific energy, what I look at is, okay, what's going on in the zodiac sign of Aries, right? And what's going on with your ruling dignitary? So what's going on in the zodiac sign of Aries is that Chiron is still in Aries. No other planets or major planets are. It's at 19 degrees Aries, which means it's at the very end of the second decade of Aries. Um, and we know that Chiron is trying to Venus conjunct Mars. Mars is your ruling dignitary, so we also have to dive deep into what's happening with it. It's transiting between 19 and 22 degrees Leo this week. It is conjunct to Venus all week long. In fact, it's getting the, the conjunction is getting tighter because Venus moves faster than Mars. Um, it's squared Uranus, and Mars square Uranus is just, I am not going to be the same. I am going to make a difference. I'm going to change. I am going to challenge the norm. Real revolutionary energy. And then we have the trying to Chiron, which means healing healing up those past wounds especially physical ones when you deal with chiron and aries and mars these are really these could be very physical wounds that we're able to heal or able to accept and start to kind of heal through helping 
others through understanding the process of healing. We also have um, kind of a frustrating semi-square to the sun. So Mars semi-square the sun, honestly, since it's only a semi-square, I honestly feel like it's just going to make us real insistent. It's going to make us really super powered and insistent on we're going to get things done now right we're, we're not, we don't want to we don't want to we don't want to we don't want to slow down um sometimes this could bring us closer to injury if it's a full square but a semi-square is more just we're frustrated we have frustrated and and that frustration could really inspire us to keep motivated and not doubt ourselves or question ourselves so um of course if it's physical it could just mean since the sun is in cancer i don't know it it could just mean if, if it's physical it could just mean something is acting up like an old injury is acting up so you might have a creaky knee or something like that this week um, it just may be a little a little bit more agitated FYI um, let's go into the decans so Aries if your natal Sun is between if you know that your natal Sun is between 0 and 9 degrees Aries you are an Aries 1 because your Sun your natal Sun falls in the first decan of Aries this translates to March Aries birthdays. So between March 22nd and say March 30th, maybe April 1st, that would be the time span, the birth date span that correlates to um, zero to nine degrees Aries. So for you guys, your natal suns are square to the sun, which could mean frustration when it comes to clashing up against other people's egos or them feeling like you're super egotistical. Also a sense of feeling maybe a little bit insecure and overcompensating through arrogance. So just be very aware of that. You're conjunct to Neptune um, if you are at the very cusp of Pisces because Neptune is at 27 degrees. So those of you born like March 22nd, March 23rd, your natal suns are already conjunct to Neptune, FYI, you guys. What does that mean? Exceptionally creative energy, somebody who is very intuitive and very psychic. And it may be that you're just starting to explore those aspects of yourself because it's the first time you've learned that you have. It's like, it's like Neptune conjunct your sun will awaken those skills and abilities inside of you and it will you it's it, it's it, it will inspire you to be more creative in terms of not waiting for what's there but trusting the imagination to manifest something that is there but not to the point of distraction just an fyi it's really good to um funnel that creative energy into a creative activity um anyone you choose but any creative activity you choose I think you'll really, really use the energy the best in that way. You also have a long-term sextile to Pluto, which means there are huge gateways and opportunities opening as you change, as you yourself change, and how formidable you are in your conviction, because sun sextile Pluto, anything sun Pluto is very formidable. Sometimes it's intimidating, sometimes it's inspiring, whatever way it makes itself known and people people get out of the way. With a sextile, this is really good because it means people are just gonna take you seriously. They're not gonna be afraid of you, but they're they're going to 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 um, clear the way for you. So this is this is really powerful energy over the next couple of years to really sort of serve you well and serve your intentions and goals very well. Um, okay, if you are at the cusp, so this is the Pisces Aries cusp. So once again, this is back to the May, Mar uh, I'm sorry, um, March 22nd, 23rd Aries. Um, Mercury will be square to your natal suns as of the 26th of this of this week so what does that mean by the end of this week there could be some sort of frustration or agitation when it comes to communications or your 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 intellectual processes your brain so what does it feel like it feels like kind of a mini mercury retrograde I would just be aware we have mercury transiting from Gemini into cancer there could be some sort of disputes between friends and family there could also be you know some sort of hiccups because you're speaking you're you're speaking to your family like they're your friend and maybe you didn't want to share that information there could also be just a sense of um, 
misunderstandings and dropped emails it's almost like it's gonna feel like your own personal mercury retrograde where just these idiot things start happening to you from the end of this week into next week um, it will pass quickly so you don't have to worry but I I if I were you this week I wouldn't schedule any important presentations tests resumes um, um, I'm sorry applications interviews auditions anything where you have to communicate yourself it it's probably not gonna go so it's not gonna go let's put it this way it won't be that you flop but it it won't go as well as it could have gone if your son wasn't square to mercury so maybe just push it off or schedule it toward the beginning of of toward the end of next week or in a couple weeks from now but that that would be the most ideal if you can if you can it's just a kind of a process of trying to go slower thinking before you speak and um, making sure things are in the best order you can put them in before you go into the situation that's my suggestion all right Aries twos so if your natal Sun is between 10 and 19 degrees Aries then you are an Aries two this correlates to Aries birthdays between I would say the second and the tenth or eleventh or say the first and the tenth it's kind of that energy right there if you are born around the 9th or 10th of April your natal suns are already conjunct to Chiron or your natal suns are conjunct to Chiron really tightly conjunct now all of you have been experiencing this conjunction to Chiron over the past couple of years but now Chiron is at the very end of Aries 2 sitting there at 19 degrees so if, if your natal suns are between, seven, say, 17 degrees and I would say 21 degrees, you are in a tight conjunction with Chiron. What does that mean? You're supercharged to sort of super motivated to use your past traumas to do something with them, to change the world, to help people. It's like your past traumas are your motivation to come out into the light and, and help and improve so this could be quite life-changing for you and there's definitely healing and catharsis that happens with this conjunction passing over so especially I would say those born around the 9th 10th of April are really feeling this impact actually it's anyone between the 9th 10th 11th and 12th in terms of their birthdays so 11 to 12th will go more into the third decant but it's definitely you guys 9th and 10th in the second decant now your natal suns are also trying it to Venus now Venus is conjunct Mars but she's not right on top of Mars so Mars is a little far out for some of you um, just an FYI if you're born toward the end of uh, of the second decade so say the eighth ninth tenth uh, of April you're you're gonna be trying to Venus all week long but ultimately those born in the very beginning around the first or second by the end of the week that trying to Venus will wear, will wear very thin it will be a, a little bit farther away than to have a major impact but you could still be experiencing this energy so let's talk about it the Sun trying Venus conjunct Mars is romance it is really putting your heart out there it is your heart and your genitals singing in wonderful harmony so this is real beautiful and comfortable energy right now for you guys um, and so it could be a very very beautiful and sexy week great time to date great time to date even if you've been married for 50 years great time to bring back that romance great great time to spend some time in bed just an FYI not sleeping though you know what I'm talking about okay now we have Aries 3 so if your natal Sun is between um, <laughs> is between uh, 20 and 29 degrees you are born in the your Sun falls in the third decan of Aries so you are Aries threes this correlates to April birthdays between say the 11th and the 21st of April so I've already discussed the conjunction to Chiron which has already started impacting you if you're born around the 11th or 12th um, as of the 23rd of June happy birthday Doug Denny that's my son's birthday as of the 23rd of June Mars is um, going to be trying to your natal suns so that is extra energy 
extra intensity, extra certainty, and physical prowess could also mean healing for your body. That's a very beautiful energy to have. Um, we also have a sextile to Mercury and a sextile to the Sun um, if you're born between the 11th, 12th, and 13th of April. This is sextile to Sun Mercury. That will really help you shine with your presentations, speaking. Definitely take tests, go on auditions, apply for those positions and go in on interviews, give your presentation, like all of that major, major beautiful energy also creative when it comes to your words or your written expression so this is a great time and you may feel inspired to do some of that creatively because the sun is also a very creative energy so beautiful week for communications with that trying to mars this is really a beautiful time to do some sexiness to really 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 to to speak your mind to speak your truth and and share yourself with somebody that you love Anyway, we also have, if you're born on the Aries Taurus cusp, um, a sextile to Saturn, which is really cool energy because Sun sextile Saturn, especially with Saturn sextile current Jupiter, come on, man, are you serious? This is a time when you can really boost yourself in your career, a uh, fly forward, really an energy of for like knowing who you are and being able to get things done and dig in. So very, very, um, uh, pro like very, very, I was going to say awesome, but progress oriented energy for you guys in all aspects of your life where you could make some major breakthroughs. You do have a long-term square to Pluto which can cause friction and tension and basically it'll make people think could make people think you're trying to bully them a little bit but honestly i think for this week it's just going to add to the sense to the presence of an authority that you possess this week i love it for you so you let me know in the comments below how all this energy is impacting you guys and please remember to subscribe to this channel recommend it to your friends and then come on over to born without boundaries tarot for your week ahead tarot card reading i love you guys and i'll talk to you next week bye aries